Let us all stand, please. And uh, please grab your Bibles as we turn to the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 31 to 32. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 until 34. Just a short conversation by Peter and the Lord Jesus Christ. Salit-salitan po natin basahin ang apat na verses na ito. I begin with verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the captain of the Lord, before that thou shalt arise, deny that thou wilt be. I want to get our title from verse 32, which reads, That I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Ngayong maga, gusto kong i-preach. Ang title na ito, Jesus is praying for you, that your faith fail not. Amen? I want you to look at your seatmate and recite this title to them. Okay, sabihin mo sa kala, Jesus is praying for you, that your faith Amen. Okay, no. Jesus is praying for you that your faith fail not. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, be with us today. Give power and anointing to my lips and give understanding, Lord, to your people. I pray, Lord, that you will erase pride in our heart, you will erase my own self sufficiency. And after this preaching, what we would have is humility and total dependence on you. And Lord, we want to take in advance for what you will do in our midst today. And ultimately, Lord, we want to thank you because we are assured that because you are our great high priest, you are praying for us that our faith would not go. Lord, as a pastor, I do not like more that people here would backslide and their faith would fail and would grow cold. Lord, it's, it's a sign of the time that eat that the love of Christians will wax cold. I pray, Lord, that your prayer will be answered that our faith would not fail. Yes, Help us, Lord, as we digest this short story in Christ name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and you cannot be seated in the presence of our God. Let's start with the context of this story. Our verse happened one night before Jesus was crucified. It is known as the Passover feast, or during this time, they were eating their last supper. So, ito na ulit kanilang supper, and tomorrow, they papa si Jesus Christ. And nakakatawa, because in this chapter, you will see that what was happening here is the apostles were debating among who is the greatest among them. Imagine, Jesus was about to die the next morning and they were still debating who is the greatest among them. Ano ito? Ayaw ba man ito? They want to be preeminent, they want to be more than the others. And so they were, they were talking, who is the greatest among us? And in, the, in that conversation, very awkward conversation, who is the greatest among us? So maybe it's Jesus Christ and drop the bomb to Peter and his companions. Sabi niyo, sabi niya, drop down. Next verse, please. Sabi niya, and the Lord said, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you. So imagine, kita niyo to, at hindi ba ito sila, oh, ako ang greatest, sabi niyo, Peter, no, I'm the spokesperson of the twelve, probably I'm the greatest in the kingdom. John said, no, I'm the closest, so probably I'm the greatest. And then suddenly Jesus said, oops, Peter, let me tell you, let me tell all of you, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. 
And then sabi niya, grace and encouragement niya. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. So the, the, the conversation became so serious. And then he gave his encouragement. And then next, next verse, drop down, sabi niya, and he said unto him, Lord, Iklaan naman nagmayabang si Peter, sabi niya, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both in prison and in death. Yeah, man. Lord God, sa mabunta. So, sama ko sa'yo. But then Jesus said to him, he rebuked Peter again, sabi niya, and he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest. Then of course, alam namin yung story, hindi na natin kamasahin. But after this, after the Last Supper, I, so Jesus Christ na po, I went, hinuli na, he went to trial, and he was crucified. And so, we want to learn this morning four spiritual lessons that we can learn from this conversation that Peter had with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so, uh, are you ready to work? Yeah. Okay, first spiritual lesson here. Satan is a real enemy opposing God's will in this world and in our life. Kung naka-red letter po ang inyong mga Bible, may tita niyo po na naka-red letter po ang portion na yan. Which means, those are the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Siya mismo ang nagsabi nito. At ano ang sabi ni Jesus Christ? And the Lord said, Simon, behold, Satan. From the very lips of Jesus Christ, binanggit niya ang reality ng existence ni Satan. I want to tell you folks, Satan is real and he is here in this world Opposing God's will for this world and opposing God's will in our life. Mm -hmm. Secular uh, education is trying to deny the existence of God. But at the same time, secular education is trying to deny even the existence of Satan. Sabi lang, wala naman talagang demonyo. Relative lang ang devil. Kung sino yung nangaaway sa'yo, baka siya sa Satan. <laughs> in fact, we even use Satan as a scarecrow for kids. Ano yun, anak, behave ka. Pag hindi, papakaya kita kay Satan. Ano yung ginawa natin yung scarecrow at panahawal lang sa Satan? But no! Satan is a real enemy and he is here opposing the will of God in your life. Kaya nga, let me remind you, Satan was once Lucifer, amen? Satan was once Lucifer, Satan was once the morning star. He was the most beautiful creature in heaven until he rebelled against God. In fact, Satan, Satan's body was instrument itself. Siya ang board director ng langit. At napakaganda niya, at napakagalit niya. But he rebelled against God. In fact, Satan is very influential. That when he rebelled against God, one third of the heavenly host followed him in rebellion. What is this? Satan is here with his demons and they are real and they are out there just like a roaring lion seeking whom they may be born. In fact, deny is Satan to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is called the Lion of Judah. And what is Satan? The roaring lion. Jesus is the Prince of Peace and Satan became the Prince of the Power of the Air. He is real and he is out here to discourage us. At sabi niya to, he may sit us as we can in godly Satan. He is here, he is real, so that he will sit us. His plan is to sit us as wheat. Sayang lang walang farmer sa atin na yun, or meron ba? But this is an agricultural term na para bang sasalain yung grain, pagkatapos mong kunin lahat ng palay, kailangan mo siyang salain hanggang sa mahanap mo kung ano yung totoo at hindi. So dadaan yan sa process. That's a lion, they will pound it, they will grind it, that's the, that's the sifting process. And then you will find what is the shaft and the wheat. Yung chaft po dito, yun yung parang balot niya, parang pamukha niya yung grain. Pero walang laman, hindi siya totoo. At haanapin din niya yung totoo, yung wheat, dahil yun yung mga tunay na anak ng Panginoon. And Satan's desire is this, salain niya tayo. At gusto niya malaman, sino ba sa mga tao ito ang tunay na may Panginoon sa kanilang buhay. And if you remember someone, naalala niya someone na may memory verse na, kaya sabi niya, the ungodly are not so, but are like the shock which the wind driven away. Ano yun? Kapag ikaw ay walang laman, 
Ikaw ay hindi tunay na anak ng Panginoon. Hindi ka tunay na nananampalataya sa Kanya. Satan will grab you and the wind will just... Alam mo yun, tatakay ka ng temptation. Itatakay ka palayo. Bakit? Hindi ka tunay na anak ng Panginoon. Pero ang gusto malaman ni Satan dito is this. Sasalain niya tayo para makita niya kung sino ang mga tunay na anak ng Panginoon. Gusto niya malaman, who is the weak? See us as weak. I want to see who the real Christians are. Because, what is his goal? Drop down. We know this. The goal of Satan for the real followers of Jesus Christ is this. To tempt us. Or secondly, to give us trials. Laging dalawa po ang ginagawa ni statement sa atin. It's either to give us seeming good things. Mga maganda sa mata. Mga pleasurable. Mga bisyo. At kung ano-ano mga temptation na pwede na ibigay sa atin ang maganda sa ating mga mata. And he will do that. To get us away from God. But secondly, He will also use trials. Mga pahirap sa ating buhay. Mga tao na maninira sa atin. Mga tao na magbabagsak sa atin. Mga kalamidad. All of the sufferings that you are experiencing. The devil is using this. What's the reason? To discourage you and get you away from God. Satan is out there. And he wants to discourage you. For you to forget about God, for you to, alam mo yun, parang itangay ka sa Panginoon because His will, Satan's will, is to oppose the will of God. Nung kami po ay nasa Bible school, lahat kami nagbibiroan dito, na si Satan talaga, wala naman talaga siyang agenda sa mundo. Pero ang pinaka-agenda niya ay gawin lang yung opposite ng gusto ni God. Ang aming joke dati, ang nangari si Adam and Eve, di ba, ginawa sila ni God na naked, Remember? Ginawa sila ni God na hubad at hindi sila nahihiya. Anong ginawa ni Satan? Tinemin na si Eve para magkasala sila, para mahiya sila na nakahubad sila. So anong ginawa nila? Gumawa sila ng limbs para tapitan ang kalilang sarili. See? Ginawa sila ni God na hubad. Anong ginawa ni Satan? Dinamitan sila. So sabi ni God, okay, hindi limbs ang tamang damit. Dapat animal skin because this represents the blood that was shed for your sin. So dinamitan ni God sila ng coat skin. So ano naman gagawin ni Satan? Ayun, na dinamitan tayo ni God. Anong gagawin ni Satan? Inuubaran niya naman tayo. So fine job, right? But you know what? It's the reality. Wala naman talagang agenda si Satan dito. But to oppose the will of God. God wants you to be holy. So what will Satan do? He will tempt you to work this. God wants you to be prayerful. So Satan will tempt you to be busy. God wants you, I mean, to follow Christ. But Satan will tempt you to follow others. Satan has no agenda unless to get you out of the will of God. So yan po, puna natin spiritual lesson dito. Pangalawa, ano po, maganda ito. In God's sovereignty, He allows the sifting process to refine us. So firstly, it's true Satan is out there and He wants to sift us. He wants to discourage us and he wants to get us away from God. But here, in God's sovereignty, God is allowing it. Mahirap itong mayayin, mahirap itong kainin. But this is the reality of Scripture. Si God mismo ay inaalam niya ang devil to give us sufferings. Inaalam niya si Satan to tempt us and to, and to give us trials and sufferings. Why? Because even God is sovereign over the devil. The devil is not in the same level as God. Hindi sila yin yang na opposites. Hindi sila magkalaban sa chess na black and white. No. As Martin Luther have said, even Satan is God Satan. Ano yun? Kahit si Satan, kailangan niya mag-submit sa authority ni God. But in God's sovereignty, si God control niya ang lahat sa amin na okay. Sige, devil, I will allow you to tempt and give trials to my children. But God has a bigger goal. And what is that goal? To refine us. Amen? Amen. To sanctify us and to bring out the best in us. Kaya sabi niya sa verse na ito, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desire to have you. Yung word na desire na yan, hindi lang yung basta gusto. Pero yung Greek translation niya is parang Satan is asking permission. Para ba ganito? Satan asked permission from me to, to tempt you and to give you trials 
and to have you. Satan asked permission from God. At you know what, mga kaibigan, hindi po ito bago. Because even in the Old Testament, nangyari na to, right? Remember the story of Job? Look at this story. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and shunned him. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And King Satan came also among them. So there was a time that the worship yung mga angels at itong si Satan ay pumasok din siya. Pumunta siya sa Panginoon to talk with God. At ang naging usapan nila is si Job, ang anak ng Panginoon who, who feared the Lord, who was perfect and perfect and is mature. He was a mature Christian, he was an upright Christian, and he feared God. Ngunit, siya, siya ang maging object ng suffering at trial at discouragement ni Satan. I want to tell you folks, it doesn't mean that you are close with God, that you are free from discouragement. It doesn't mean that you are following God, that you are spared from trials. But in fact, the contrary is very much true. Ano ibig sabihin no? The more you follow Christ, the more you are an object of trials and suffering. Kailangan tanggapin nyo na po yun. Kailangan magkaroon kayo ng level of acceptance. Bakit? The fastest way to heal is for you to accept your reality first. Ito. Lahat ng counselors, lahat ng mga psychologists, ito ang sasabihin nila sa inyo. Ang unang process ng healing is acceptance. And unless you accept the reality of your suffering and your trial, hindi ka makapag-lupan. Kaya mga kapatid, kailangan tanggapin nyo na ito. Even if you are following Christ, there will be trials. Even if you love Jesus, there will be suffering. The reality of God. And so si Satan, pumunta siya sa presence ni God, and then what happened? Look at this story. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And then sumagot si Satan, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And ito, kunin niyo po itong line. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Marami po sa nagpipreach ng story ni Job, lagi nilang sinasabi, nagpaalam si Satan kay God na bigyan ng suffering si Job. That is correct. Pero ang karaniwan na hindi sa story na ito is this. Sino ang nag-initiate ng suffering? Sino ang nag-initiate ng suffering? It was not even Satan. It was not. Sabi ni God, okay, Satan, nakita ko ba yung anak ko na Si Job, he fears me. He loves me. He is following me. Have you considered him? You don't see there when a man has been shot and tried and suffering. You don't see there when a man has been shot and test. Imagine it was God who initiated this conversation. Satan, have you considered my servant? The devil. Look at this verse there. And then what happened? And Satan answered the Lord and said, "That Job fear God for nothing." Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Ano po ito? Sabi ni Satan, para may hindi dahil po ito, sabi ni Satan kay God, sabi niya, God, mahal ka, mahal ka ni, uh, mahal ka ni, ni Job, at hindi ko siya kaya ibigyan ng suffering kasi naglagay ka ng hedge about him. Hindi ko siya kaya bigyan ng suffering because you put a hedge about his house. I cannot attack him because there was put a hedge on every side about him. Imagine, si Satan mismo ang nakarealize that God's protection is around us. Amen. At kailangan pa rin siya, God's protection is about you. His hedge of protection is on you. It's on your family. It's on you every side. And God has blessed the work of your hands. And God has increased your substance greatly. Kahit si Satan, nare-recognize niya that God is protecting us and preserving us and even giving us provisions. Kaya sabi niya, God, paano ko naman bibigyan ng suffering sa Job? Eh, protektado mo yan. So, ano sabi ni God? Drop down. Sabi ni God, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power 
Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. See, sabi ni God, okay, sige. Pero ito na ang aking gagawin. Ibababa ko ng konti ang aking protection. And everything that is in his hands, lahat ng kanyang pagmamayari, sa'yo na. Except isa, yung kanyang buhay. Dahil ako ang nakahawa ng kanyang buhay. Sige, sa na lang. So you know the story, right? So Satan killed the ten children of Job. Satan killed all the animals of Job. Satan gave boils to Job from head to toe. What a suffering. Isang araw lang nangyari na ito. God said, tinawag niya mga friends ni Job. Putahan niyo si Job. Decriticize niyo si Job. Sabihin niyo sa kanya, kala ko ba may Diyos ko? Bakit nagsasuffer ko? Diyan mo malalaman ang mga kaibigan na critical. Yung pag nagsasuffer ka, lalapit sila sa'yo, sabihin lang, oh, kala ko ba may Diyos ka? Pag nagsasuffer ka. Diba? Not only that, God even influenced, I mean, Satan even influenced the wife of Job. Ano sabi ng asawa ni Job sa kanya? Job, just curse God and God. But the suffering all happened in one day. And 17 chapters ng book of Job nagamit para sa reklamo ni Job. Masahin niyo po ang book of Job. By the way, book of Job is the proverbs of suffering. If you are suffering, read the book of Job. Dahil mo ng reklamo doon at makikita niyo kung binasa niyo. Lahat din ang reklamo niyo. Pag nagsasuffer kayo, ang doon. <laughs> Lord, asan ka? Lord, ang adver mo. Ang daya mo, Panginoon. Nag-serve ako sa'yo, ganito mayayari sa akin. Lord, bakit yung mga kriminal sila ang nabibless? Ako hindi. Di ba ganito ang mga reklamo nito? Ando lahat yung sabaw dito, basa ako. But then, sa dulo niya, God's grace was upon Job. Job was encouraged. At ano ang conclusion ni Job? Look at this. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth. Let's go. Mga kapatid, Satan. I mean, God is allowed to say that. Go ahead. Sige. Try my children. Tell my children, but I'm going to tell you, they will come forth as God. Amen. Sige, bigyan mo sila yung suffering. And many of you know this, folks. Many of you have suffered a lot. You know this. When you look back on your suffering, you are about more matured right now. You have more sense of responsibility right now. You are more humble right now. You are more dependent on God right now because you came for us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessing be. Kaya ka sa New Testament, huwag niyo po kakalimutan ang verse na ito, okay? I-memorize niyo ang verse na ito para pag nagsapar kayo, i-recite niyo ito sa inyong sarili. You are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed or we are confused, but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. Amen. Oh, Amen. Ganda, ba? Ganda na verse na ito. Memorize this. Amen. I want you to look at your sitmate and recite this verse with your sitmate. Sige, sabihin mo sa kanya. Sabihin mo natin recite. Sabihin mo siya, sabihin mo. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed. But not in this way. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Good. Amen. Folks, tandaan nyo to ah. Yung construction of sentence na ito. Trouble, negative yun. Pero, yung distress, mas negative yun. So, kung nyo, you can be troubled like that. But you will never be distressed. Amen. So ano yun? Hinahaya ang kaligat na makonfuse but not in this way. Hinahaya ang kaligat that the devil will cast you down but not totally destroyed because God is still in control. Amen. Kaya nga po, huwag na po kayong madepress. Amen. Amen. Come on, look at me. Talk to me, God. Huwag na po kayong madepress. God is using his sufferings to refine us. He is, I mean, his fire is a refiner. Pinipino tayo to make us more like Christ every day. 
Sa so, tingin mo ba, maganda para sa'yo na wala kang suffering sa buhay? So, talk to me. Sa tingin mo ba, maganda na wala kang suffering sa buhay? I tell you, you will not be mature. You will, bata ka mag-isip pag wala kang suffering. Immature ka mag-isip. Bata, I mean, pag hindi ka dumaan sa suffering, hindi, marami kang mga spiritual lessons na hindi matututunan. Pag wala kang suffering. Tell me, tell me. Will you really pray if not for your suffering? Will you really beg God if He did not give you a trial that you cannot take? Will you really go to God pag hindi mo naranasan yung wala ka ng mautahan? Wala ka ng matakbuhan? Wala ka ng makausap? What? Doon mo natututunan ang dependence kay God. Amen. Amen. That's the second. The third lesson we can learn here is this. Ito maganda. Christ promised us His prayers, His preservation, and a purpose for our sufferings. So, sinabi niya kay Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to help. But then, dinawin niya, nagbigay si Jesus ng kanya encouragement, sabi niya, but I have prayed for you. Dito pinapakita ang high priestly role ni Jesus Christ. Siguro ang tanong nyo, anong ginagawa ni Jesus Christ sa langit nyo? Nagkakape? Hindi po. He is there praying for each one of us. Praying that our faith would not fail. He is praying for in us. Pag-pray na tayo, oh Lord, sana itong mga anak ko hindi bumagsak sa tukso. Itong mga anak ko, sana hindi matem sa kayamanan. Hindi matem sa fame, sa power. He is praying for us. Lord, sana itong mga anak ko hindi sila mga discouraged pag meron sila mga trials. Lord, please, I am praying for them that their faith would not fail. And I tell you folks, this is also the command of God for the church. That we will pray for each other. Yeah. That our faith fail not. Amen, church? Amen. Members? Amen. Can I hear an amen from you? Amen. It's our job, right? Amen. To pray for each one that our faith fail not. I love to sell us some of those. Everyone is not really praying for others to succeed. Filipino tayo, alam natin to. What, are, what is the world doing? We are wishing others to fight, to fail, to fall down. Pag may mga konti, nakataas ang ating mga kilay. Sana bumagsak ito. Pumunta ka sa abroad at tapumot ka, sino ang unang hahatak sa'yo? Ganyan ang mundo. But the culture of God's church and kingdom must be different. That we are praying that our faith fail not. Amen. That we are praying. Di ba pag minayari, Lord, bless mo yung brother niyo, palakasin mo siya. Hindi yung pag nakita mo nagkakaproblema siya, tayo pa. Sabi na mga young people, that's all. <laughs> We pray for each other that our faith fail. We pray that each one that the baby Amen. They pray that my faith fail not. They pray for your sin memory. Are you praying for your sin memory? They pray for your Lord. Sana ito hindi hindi siya matukso sa kahit anong tukso. Lord, hindi siya matukso sa yaba, hindi siya matukso kahit sa... Lord, sana kung discourage man kung katabi ko ngayon, sana hindi siya mag-backslide. Ito pray niyo ba yun? We should be praying for that. Amen? Amen. And then look at the next phrase. Look at the next phrase. And when then, and when thou art converted. Yung word na converted, ay ibig sabihin niya, when you already came back. Anong ini-insinuate ni Jesus Christ dito? Hindi niya dininay yung possibility that we will stay. Kaya ang sabi niya, when you are converted. Because when? Pag nakabalik ka na. 
hindi niya tinanay that probably there is a possibility that our faith would fail. But get this, get this. He said, when thou art converted, pag nakabalik ka na, then strengthen the faith. I want you to get the play of prepositions here, okay? Hindi na sinabi, if if you are converted, if you came back, ano sabi niya? When you come back. Ano yun yung if? It gives us the notion of probability. Para bang may chance na hindi ako pumalik. Hindi yun ang palagin namin. Ano ang palagin namin? It's when. Ano yun? It's certainty. Nasa timing lang yan. But it is sure. Amen. Sabi niya, pag nakabalik ka na, ibig sabihin, sigurado, makabalik ka, pero pag nakabalik ka na, then strengthen the brethren. Get this document, guys. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, has sealed us. Nung araw na ikaw ay tunay na naligtas at tinanggap po ang Panginoon bilang Diyos na kapagligtas, the Holy Spirit has sealed you. And He has sealed you until the day of judgment. And you will never be lost again. A ship that was found can never be lost again. A sinner that was made whole by God can never become an unbeliever. What is this? The doctrine of the preservation of God. Amen. Once we got saved, we are always saved. This is the assurance of salvation na ipinangako ng Panginoon that He will preserve us. At sabi ng Bible, no man can pluck us out of the hand of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, nor height, nor depth, nor ages. Not even the kind of death that you will experience will ever separate you from the love of God. If you are His Son, you will be forever His Son. Amen. At kunin Pag ikaw ay umalis at lumayo sa Panginoon at never ka nang nakabalik, dapat ka kabahal ka. Dahil ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, you went out from us because you were never of us. Pero ang tunay na anak ng Panginoon, may times man, at huwag na tayo maglumahan dito, there were times our faith failed. But what happened? God convicted us. God grabbed hold of us. Magamit siya ng mga tao, ng mga circumstance. Hanggang sa ma-realize mo, hindi mo kaya na wala ang Panginoon. At babalik ka doon. It's not if you're converted. No, it's when. Iba lang yung timing, pero sigura, ibabalik ka ng Panginoon. Amen. Amen. Remember David, the man after God's own heart, he failed terribly. Sabihin ko sa inyo, baka siguro, ang iba sa inyo, mas mabait pa kay David. Because he failed terribly. Committed adultery, committed even murder. Lumayo siya sa Panginoon. Pero anong ginawa ni God? Gumamit siya ng isang prophet, prophet Nathan. Pinuntaan niya si David, at sabi niya, David, kakasala ka sa ang Panginoon. Imagine pwedeng ipapatay ni David si Prophet Nathan. Uy, hari ako. Ano ko nililigyo? Nathan was used by God to rebuke him. David, you are sinning against God. Ang sabi ni David, siya ay umiyak. Siya ay naglagay ng sakro at siya ay nagfast. Siya ay nagrepent. At ano ang kanyang prayer? Lord, sabi niya, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Ano niya? Nakabalik siya. Paan tuloy na lang ng Panginoon? Ginabalik niya. Si Samson, ganun din, the strongest man, but only failed because of a delight. He failed terribly, at nung siya ay bulag, siya ay nakatala, hindi niya alam ang kanyang gagawin siya, umiyak sa Panginoon and said, Lord, just give me one more chance. Sabi niya, Gonna give you the Holy Spirit. Inulang niya yung poste na matay ang Philistines kasama siya. But at least, before he died, kabalik siya sa Panginoon. Yeah. The prodigal son, kinuha niya ang kanyang pana, umalis siya, ginastos niya sa saya, sa pleasure. At 
nare-realize niya, kinakain na niya yung pagkain ng bago. Sabi niya, ano ba naman itong buhay? Yung mga servant sa bahay ng tatay ko, kumakain sila ng butter chicken. <laughs> ang patatid, ako na anak niya, pagkain ng bago yung kinakain ko. Ano ba itong ginawa ko? Sa aking buhay? Pero pagbabasahin yung prodigal son, di ba lumayos yung anak? Ano yun? Picture yun ang backsliding. Ano sabi niya? Ano sabi niya ba yun? When he came to himself, he went back. Folks, if you are far from God right now, you need to come to yourself. You need to come to a realization that you cannot, you cannot run your life on your own and you need to get back to God. And I promise you, the Father is waiting at the door to welcome us. Lahat ang anak ng Panginoon, binabalik. Bakit? Prayer niya sa akin. That our faith would not fail. But if ever we would fail, come back. I will bring you back. Ang pangatlong prayer, ang pangatlong dahil is to strengthen, strengthen thy brethren. Ano yan? Yan yung purpose sabi niya. Okay, Peter, nakabalik ka, bumagsak ka. Pero pag nakabalik ka na, I want you to strengthen and encourage the others. Ano po ito? Lahat ng ating suffering has a purpose in it. And what's the purpose of your suffering? Answer, for you to strengthen and encourage future brethren who will go, to the, go through the same experience that you went through. Kaya nga po, members, nangyari po kayo, okay? Lahat ko lang sinasabi ko sa inyo. Kung nagsasuffer ka ngayon, please, huwag ka maging bitter. Huwag mong pahirali ng bitterness, ang forgiving spirit, ang emotions, no? You need to process your suffering. Lord, ano ba yung lesson mo? Na meron dito, sabi ng Bible, ask wisdom from God when you are suffering. Para ang nakikita mo sa suffering mo, hindi yung mga tao ang naninira sa'yo, pero ang makita mo sa suffering is yung mga lessons ni God na tinuturo niya sa'yo. So that when you are already a king, you will strengthen others. Dahil kunin nyo ito mga kapatid, pag ikaw dumahan ka ng suffering, ngunit ang pinairat mo ay bitterness and everything, I tell you, you can never, you can never encourage and strengthen others. Ngayon, marami tayo mga members, mga single mothers, kabilang buhay, kabilang bahay. Dumahan kayo sa suffering, alam ko, mahirap. Mahirap. Hindi ko man maintindihan yan. Kaya alam ko mahirap. Hindi pwedeng pahirahan mo yung bitterness mo. Bakit? Kasi someday, may mga dadalo pa ang Panginoon ulit dito. Na mga single mother din yung kagano. Anong i-address mo sa kanya? Ano dyan? Pag bitter ka, itong i-address mo sa kanya. Pag bitter ka, alam mo yung akin, nabur ko lang ito. Kabulin mo din. Yan ang i-address mo yan. Walang spirituality, hindi godly. Puro bitter. Kaya kailangan process mo yung yung suffering. Lord, alam mo lesson mo dito. Para pag may dumating din na gano'n, kapatid, alam mo, nagtiwala ko sa Panginoon. Panginoon ang nagiganti para sa amin. Ano ba? Ano ba? Biblical lights ba? Siya ang naging asawa ko. Hindi na ako nag-depend sa asawa. Sa kahit sinong lalaki dyan, ang dependence ko na sa Panginoon. Ano ba? Magandang ato. Gano'n ka sa hirap? Sige, gano'n ka sa hirap? Kung ang reaction mo ay bitter disturb, ang adverb mo, bakit? Sa lahat ng tao, kung ba yung pinanganak na mahirap? Bakit sila? Mayroong ganyan, ako wala. Sila ganito. Ano, ano sasabihin mo kung may tao din lang Panginoon sa buhay mo? Ano ganyan din? Ano may address mo? Wala ko sasabihin ng matinong bakit. Di ito ito. Pero kung pinaprocess mo yung Lord, I know you gave me poverty as my cross to bear because you are making me a spine to. Tinuturoan mo ako dito ng strength, ng resilience, ng trust, at dependence sa inyo. At pag ito, alam mo yung laki ka sa hirap, nag-serve ka sa Panginoon, naging professional ka pa, pinagpala ka ng Panginoon, and you are close to Him. Ikaw yung perfect na magiging example at encouragement at strength sa iba. Amen. 
Folks, what is your suffering right now? God will use that someday to strengthen others. So please, do not be broken. God is about to make you a testimony of His grace for others. Ako po, hindi naman ako talaga dumaan ng suffering din. But I have, my, I have a share of suffering. I know what, may kita ko naman. Mayroon na mga bata pastor din na lumalapit sa akin talking about the same suffering I have. And I would tell them, alam mo, hindi natin kailangan naman. Hindi natin kailangan patunayan ang ating sarili. Tiwala tayo sa Panginoon. Alam mo yun, ay kapag bigay ka na encouragement na gano'n because you and friend, folks, I know you know this. God is praying for you that you fail not and if ever you fail, God promised He will bring you back. And when you come back, God will use you to strengthen others. Ganda rin Man. At ulit sa ko, lesson ko, last na kwento. In all our temptations and trials, God is teaching us humility and dependence. <laughs> sa lahat po ng ating pinagdadaanan, trial na niyan, suffering, ang pinakagol ni God dito is to remove the monster of pride in our heart. And He wants to take that away. Kita niyo yung ating story, drop down. Sabi niyo, sabi ni Peter, Nasa na natin ito kanina, di ba? Sabi ni Peter, And he said unto him, Lord, hindi ako mag-reveal sa aking faith. Kahit makulong ba, sasama ang pinas sa tulungan. Yeah, boy. Kahit mamatay ka, sasama ako sa'yo. Pero nirebuke siya ng Panginoon. Sabi niya, Peter, you don't know what you're saying. I tell you, this day will not end. You will deny me three times. At pagkatapos ng Last Supper, you know the story, right? Pagkatapos ng Last Supper, yung mga si Judas, kinuha niya yung mga Roman soldiers, pumunta sila, hinalikan niya si Jesus Christ. And then, sinulit. Sa galit ni Peter, ang kinuha niya, hinubot niya yung mga espada, sinubukan ang putulin ng ulo ng sundalo, nakailag yung sundalo, at nagamaan niya yung tenga, kinuha niya Jesus Christ, yung tenga, pinulit niya. At anong sabi niya kay Peter? Peter, get me behind me, save her. Imagine. Pinag-uusapan lang nila si Satan doon sa Lord's Supper, sa Last Supper. Ngayon, anong tawag nila kay Peter? Satan, basta nito. Bakit mo pinuto? Ano ba? Parang di ka natuto sa akin. Revenge is not our attitude. At isa pa, bakit mo sila pinipigilan? Ulit ako. E plano to ng Panginoon, tinuro ko na to sa inyo. Kailangan ko mapatay para bayaran ko ang kasalanan mo. Tapos ayaw mo. Peter, nauna ka ng emosyon mo. So, inuli na si Jesus Christ, kinabahan na lahat ng mga apostles. They were bringing Christ, ang tamang sundala na makalitig sa kanya. Ano ginawa ng mga apostles? Lahat sila umakas. Lahat sila sumusunod sa malayo, nagtago. May lumapit na tao kay Peter, sa Peter. Ibuksa mo si Jesus Christ. Sa kaban niya, na baka pati siya huli, sabi niya, hindi! Second person came to Peter, you know Christ, right? No! And the worst, the third, was a young lady, a young child, batang babae. Sabi siguro parang si Cassie di lang ito. Sabi siya sa akin, Peter Ross, you know Jesus, right? Ang lint na babae. Anong sabot ni Peter? He started cursing Jesus Christ, sabi niya, I do not know that man. Sa batang babae, pininayin mo si Jesus Christ. It's the worst. So may lahat ng manong naalala ni Peter, the prophecy in Jesus Christ, that he will deny and treat that siya ay naging Peter, siya ay tumakbo, umiyak. The Bible says he went back fishing. Yung sampung mga disciples, ganun din, they went back fishing. At kung si Jesus Christ ay nakapapos sa cross, sino na lang naiwan? Was John? Hindi si Peter, wala si Andrew, wala si Bartolome, lahat, sabo, wala. They went away. Bakit? Kung sila nagyari. And if you will trace this back, kapag ipo-flashback natin, ano ang pinakalasong bakit kumagsak si Peter at yung mga ibang apostol? Kapag ipo-flashback niya, when Jesus Christ was on the Garden of Gethsemane, habi niya kay Peter, sa 
Saka sa mga apostles niya, bukas, mapapakon na ako sa group. Magpe-pray ako sa mundo. Naiwan kayo dito. Mag-pray din kayo. Pagkat si Diyos sa mundo, nag-pray siya one hour. Pagbalik niya, ang naabutan niya. Tulog siya. <laughs> Wala nag-pray. Tulog na. Sabi niya, can you not pray one hour? Sabi niya, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is not. Kaya sabi niya, watch and pray that you, I mean, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Sabi niya kila Peter, watch and pray, dapat pray, nagulong ka lagi. Sabi niya, okay, sige, ulitin natin, okay, tulit ako, pray kayo, magat niya, pagbaba niya, ay, tulog pa rin. Ano yun? They were full of self-sufficiency. Akala nila, kaya nila ang Christian life. Without them depending on the Lord in prayer. And I tell you, hindi mo kaya ang buhay mo na wala pa. At ang nangyari dito, alam natin ang matay na si Jesus Christ, right? They went back fish. On the third day, Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he stayed 40 days here on this world. At anong kanya ginawa? Binalikan niya yung mga apostles. And ano nangyari dito sa next verse? Dito sa about John, Binalikan ni Jesus Christ si Peter sa seashore at sila ay kumain ng fish. At habang sila ay kumakain, naalala yung story, right? Tinanong ni Jesus Christ si Peter ang tatlong tanong. Sabi niya, Peter, love as thou me more than this. Ang sabi ni Peter, Lord, thou knowest that I love. Pangalawa, sabi niya, Peter, mahal mo ka talaga ako. Lord, alam mo, mahal. And for the third time, ito, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, love is thou me. And then, ano niya, Peter was grieved. Siya ay kumiyak, di ba, narealize niya, tatlong beses ko ibininay si Jesus Christ. Ngayon, tatlong beses niya ako tinatanong kung mahal mo na talaga siya. And knowing Peter, siguro ang sagot niya dito, kung hindi dumaan si Peter sa sabi, Probably ang sagot niya dito, Lord, ako ba? Tawag <laughs> kita. Ako ang apostle mo na pinaka na tama ang sayo. Ako ba? Kung hindi siya dumaan sa suffering, I'm sure ganun siya sasunod. Pero dahil dumaan siya sa suffering, ano yan, he was grieving his heart. Na-imagine mo yung kanyang mukha, nakatingin siya sa ground, na kayo mo ang kanyang pulog, sabi niya, Lord, thou knowest everything. You know me. That I love. Alam sa akin, Jesus Christ, then be my shield. Ako pala, how I wish, madaling matanggal ang kayabangan sa akin. But I tell you, lahat po tayo ay mayroong tinatagong yabang sa ating puso. Bakit na sa slide ang ego mo? Kasi may ego ka. Kaya may nasa sila. Bakit ganun? Sa workplace. Hindi ka nakakontento na kilala nila yung pangalan mo. Kailangan mo yung pagmayabang mo yung credentials mo. Pagmayabang mo yung title mo. Pagmayabang mo yung transcript mo. Ganun. And you know what? This world. Ang tingin ng mundo sa humility, it's weakness. Pag-ambal ka at tingin niya sa'yo, parang pwede ka nilang abusun. Kaya anong ginagawa ng tao ng lahat ng tao? Tinatry natin ang magyabang, ang mag-boast, ang magpakita ng aura at magpakita ng countenance na alam mo yun, parang kaya kaya ko. In fact, people are attracted with proud leaders. Minsan ang gusto natin, yung leader na may dating, yung leader pa na mayabang, maangas. Because we think, Being proud is strength. And we think humility and witness and gentleness is witness. It's like people today that are attracted with proud, maaas yung madate. In fact, pag nagsalita, alam ko talaga may pagpamay mo. Why? Lahat po tayo ay meron pinatagong biyata sa ating mga puso. And I tell you, sa sobrang yabang natin, dinidinay natin na mayabang tayo. 
At ang yabang sobrang sabal niya, na habang pinipreach pa, binabanggit ko yung word na kayabangan ang nasa isip ko, Pastor, hindi naman ako yun, kapag ito siguro. Kaya tayo kayabang. How I wish that God can teach us humility, kaya kaya nating natin this year, right? Humility and gratitude. How I wish by just preaching the word of God, we will all be humble. Kailangan idaan ni God sa sample para matanggal niya. Pero gusto kong sabihin ito, mga kapatid, mahal ka ni God, kaya niya pinagawin. Kaya nga kung saan nagagaling ang yabang mo ngayon, tumagdok, saan nagagaling ang yabang mo ngayon, I tell you, yan din ay kakabagsak. Kung nagagaling ang yabang mo ngayon sa pera mo, I tell you, yan din ang gagamitin ni God para ibagsak ka niya. Bakit mahal ka niya? Mas importante sa Panginoon ang humility at character mo kaysa yung pera mo. Saan mo kinukuha ang yabang mo? With your degree? With your possession? Yan din ang gagamitin ni God. He will raise up another who is better than you. Ano? Para mas like ka? Pero pinapamaya mo, oh, ang ganda ng aking pamilya. Itirahan ang Panginoon ang isa sa mga anak mo. Ang isa pa-realize mo, hindi ka pwedeng magyabang na. Ang galing ko kasi magulang eh. Kaya makaayos yung mga anak ko. Oh. How do you do that? Bakit? Mas importante kay God na humble ka. Kaysa mayaman ka. Mas importante kay God na humble ka at maganda ang karakter mo. Kaysa yung dahil ang grupo mo at kayo, ang karakter is more important to God. And He loves us so much that He will allow the devil to try it. To humble us. And what's the purpose? Sabi niya, feed my sheep. Only the humble ones. Ang gagamitin ng Panginoon in a great and mighty way. Kaya nga si Peter, dininay niya si Jesus Christ three times. Pero nung nakabalik siya on the day of Pentecost, siya ang nag-preach and 3,000 people got saved. He was doing miracles. Sabi niya, may nakasalubong siyang pilahin. Silver and gold of my none, but such as I am given in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Sabi niya, mga humble ang ginagamit ng Panginoon. Ang tatandaan nito, merong temptation sa mundo na kailangan mong magyabang para meron kang ma-accomplish na maraming bagay. No. At kung titignan mo yung mga tao naging successful pero mayamang sila, hindi ang Panginoon ang nag-glorify sa kanilang success. Sarili din lang nila. But if you want God to use you greatly, you need to push down yourself and let God use you. Amen. Because God exalted God. Amen? Amen. 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 Christ is praying for you Amen. that your faith will not fail. Come on, let's all stand up please. So set up, kita na ating mga mata. God in our hands and pray. And I want to give you time this morning. I want you to talk to God. Ano man ang narealize mo sa preaching right? Start by saying sorry probably Lord. Forgive me for being proud. Forgive me for not being prayer. Hindi ko alam baka gumadaan ka sa suffering. Sabihin mo, Lord, bigyan mo ko ng rest. Come on, talk to God. Okay, boy, I'm going to see that this morning. The accident and I'm going to go away. I'm going to message that you know, Satan is out there to deceive us. He doesn't want you to get to know 
Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. But I want to tell you, Christ loves you so much. He died for you. He came down to give his life for you and to save you from your sin. He promised you eternal life. The Bible said, if you will only repent of your sin and believe in him as your Lord and Savior and call to him, receive him in your heart as Lord and Savior. You will have him in your life as Lord and Savior. Sabi mga bisita, mayroon po kung simple yung panalangin dito, panalangin ang pagtanggap sa kanya. Panalangin po kung natanggapin mo siya ngayong araw na Sumunod ka sa panalangin na ito. Gawin mo panalangin mo para ako ay guide mo lang. And receive Christ today. Kung nakaredy naka ka na, follow mo. Heavenly Father, inaamin ko po na ako ay makasalan. Ngunit salamat po na ibinigay mo si Jesus Christo para makatahin para sa aking mga kasalan. Ako po ay humingi ng tao. At kayong araw na ito, inilalamay ko po ang aming pananampalatasan at tinatanggap siya ang aming buhay bilang aming Diyos sa dapat ng atas. Salamat po sa regalo ng kaligtasan, buhay na walang hanggang kay Kristo lang. Sa halang Yesus. Amen. Let's, let's continue to pray. Join me. Let's raise our hands and pray. Heavenly Father, I want to pray a benediction prayer, Lord, for all of our members who are being tried by Satan right now. Lord, if some people here are in temptation, Lord, I pray that you will strengthen them. Lord, you promise you have broken the chains of sin. So strengthen them, Lord, to flee. Lord, I don't know if there are members here, Lord, or people here who are being tried by Satan in suffering. Lord, strengthen them. Encourage them. Lord, give them the assurance that they can be confused right now, but they are not totally destroyed. Because you are in their lives. Lord, di ko alam kung may mga dumadaan sa matit niya problema dito. Hindi ba nila masabi publicly? But Lord, you know their heart. You know their cries. You see their tears. You feel their pain. Lord, strengthen them. Protect them, preserve them. Yakapin mo sila mo. Ipadama mo ang iyong pagmamahal sa kanila at ang iyong lakas at ang iyong grasya. Panginoon, prinamis mo sa amin that your grace will be sufficient for us in all our sufferings. Lord, di ko po alam kung meron ng pagod dito, Panginoon. But you promise us, Lord, that if we are tired, we can go to you. And we can find rest in you. Lord, I don't know. Someone here is really tired and depressed of carrying their burdens. Lord, you promise that if we will give our burdens to you, if we will unload our burdens to you, you will carry them for us. Lord, please. Help us. I pray for you also, mga tawag dito ng mga fatherless. Lord, huwag sila kaya ang mga discouraged. Satan is working in their minds every day, discouraging them. So many young people today, Lord, are thinking about suicide. Lord, please encourage them. Lord, remind them that you are the father of the fatherless. The husband of the widows, the God of those that are oppressed, you are our shield and buckler, our light and our salvation. 
Strengthen us, Lord, with your words, with these promises. Teach us to stand on your promises that we will never crumble in our faith. And ultimately, Lord, sa lahat ng malang sa I pray, Lord, that the suffering will not push them away from you, but will draw and push them closer to you. Because, Lord, we need you. We need you every hour. We need you every day. We cannot do this without you. We need you. Lord, we praise you, we adore you, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Christ, let me pray. Amen. Amen.